I don't get mad very often, but I am absolutely pissed at the state of agriculture and small farming in BC. I'm gonna tell you exactly why. What I'm talking about is the ALR, the Agricultural Land Reserve. If you're not familiar with the ALR, let me just give you a brief introduction and I'll talk more about it in another video coming up. The ALR is called the Agricultural Land Reserve and it was set up in the 1970s to protect farmland from development. And if you, and there's, there's a lot more to say about it, but the thing that I find that's very interesting about it is if you ask most people in BC if they like the ALR, they'll say, yeah, protecting farmland, that sounds like a good idea. But the thing that is further interesting is that if you ask them if they know anything about the policies or the effects of the policies, they'll go blank and they don't. So I've been putting together dozens of interviews that I'm gonna be putting into another piece about the ALR eventually. Um, but I've interviewed a lot of farmers and I've also talked to a lot of people, just common people with the ALR. And so there's a huge disconnect between what the common person thinks about the ALR and what farmers think about the ALR. And I have met only a tiny, tiny, tiny minority of farmers. Out of the 20 or so farmers that I've interviewed, I've only talked to one that actually likes the ALR. So the ALR has a lot of issues because there's a big disconnect between rhetoric and results or intentions and results. You know, I often say there's a huge difference with, with, with that in politics in general. It's what politicians say and what they do are totally different things. And that's very true with the ALR. But just this year, they signed a bill called Bill 52, which amended things on the ALR. And the intention with it, I believe, was to stop people, particularly in the lower mainland, because that's where most of this is, is only happening, of developing big mansions and other types of properties on the agricultural land. And so I think even most people would, would find that reasonable. Okay, that sounds reasonable. But again, when you look at the policies or you look at the results, it's not what's happening. So our case today in this video is going to be a woman named Jody Lucas, an entrepreneur, a farmer, a mother, family farm that runs an incredible business called the Rusted Rake in Nanus Bay that um, is a restaurant on a farm. What a great idea. And you think that that would be welcome with the ALR, especially considering that our politicians in the BC NDP love to virtue signal about sustainability and food security and, and buzzwords like local and all that. Yet, when you look at the policy, it doesn't quite add up that way. So in Jody's case, they've got this restaurant and they grow this food and they love to use the food that they grow on the farm in the restaurant. Eh, no, you can't do that. You can only do that if you are have a building that's licensed to produce alcohol. So it doesn't make any sense, but I'll let Jody expand more on that. Listen to how this ridiculous policy has completely kiboshed her business. And I just got off the phone with her and this is an update that she doesn't say in this video because this video, this interview was filmed about over a month ago, is that they actually got turned down so they can't even make the part of the business that they wanted to do again i'll let her explain that better so they've invested over a hundred thousand dollars and nope sorry can't do it but i'll let her tell the rest of the story so my name is jody lucas i own rusted rake farm in the news um bill 52 affects us directly um we bought our farm seven years ago. It was assessed as bare land. Uh, it was a foreclosure and was hadn't been farmed for um, quite a number of years. Um, at that point, we um, moved into our fifth wheel for the first year, lived in a fifth wheel um, and started developing. We put in our power, we dug our well, um, we started to uh, develop the land into farmable land again, started turning the fields over for hay, um, erected our 1400 square foot greenhouse, planted 700 blueberry bushes and just uh, started to develop more growing area for mixed veggies. Um, uh, uh, we also started the development of the building where we're sitting right now, which is our cafe style eatery, where everything that we grow and produce um, comes through our doors and then is um, value added into either breakfast, lunch, or our baked goods. Um, we originally grew red fife grain for the production of baking. 
but have since been uh, told that we are uncompliant and needed to start um, an alcohol production facility in order to stay open as a restaurant. Um, we took down our grain for food production and now have planted five acres of barley for beer production, um, have put in 15 $150,000 worth of infrastructure for a brewery in order to be in co compliant with the present ALR la uh, laws. So just so you understand that correctly, if your land is in the ALR and you want to have a restaurant that uses some of the products that you grow on the farm, so you want to put uh, lettuce from your farm in sandwiches, you want to put uh, peppers and tomatoes into your pasta sauces that you sell at the restaurant, you have to have a liquor producing crop and the facilities to process that crop so in the case here at the rusted rake they have to have a facility that can make beer and they have to have a certain amount of barley planted to make that beer just so that they can use the products they grow on their farm in their own restaurant bill 52 uh uh, affects us in regards to housing. My husband and four-year-old daughter live in a 600 square foot cabin. Our living room is my bedroom, <laughs> my husband and I's bedroom. Um, uh, we had uh, land that uh, we cleared um, that was intended for uh, the building of our home. Um, which is a non-farmable land. Um, we had hoped to have developed that uh, this year, but unfortunately um, all our money that we've had for that has been now put into making beer. Um, the, uh, and, and now we're told that because we already have one dwelling that's concrete foundation, that our second dwelling if we were to apply for it and get approval of it, would have to be a modular home. Um, and I'm sorry, but that's just not going to work for me or my family. We're hard working, we work hard, we farm hard, we've done everything that we've needed to do and well meet the surpassed needs of our, um, our products that we produce. And I feel that Bill 52 is, is completely unfair. So let me just reiterate that. They already have one building on their land, which is the Rusted Rake, the restaurant that is the basis of their business. According to Bill 52, they are not permitted to build another building, which would be a home for them to live in on their own land. They are not permitted to build a home on the land that they own. So if you're not at least half pissed off as I am, Please sign this petition, share it with many, as many people as you know, and do something about this. Especially if you're a farmer and you have skin in the game, don't be silent. Stand up, make some noise. But I just want to close with talking a little bit about the state of agriculture in BC. So in the 70s, BC used to produce over 75% of its own food. Now it's like 5%. It's, it's negligible. Most of our stuff comes from California and Mexico, and we can thank globalism for that, uh, free trade deals, what have you. Not necessarily opposed to that, it's just the reality. So if you want to farm in BC, you need to find, it, you need to find a niche, so you got to do something unique and find a unique customer base, or you got to find a way to add value. Because if you're just competing on price alone, you can't win. California and Mexico, their products are super cheap and the US also subsidizes agriculture way more than we do. So they can get cheaper products and earlier than we can here in BC. So you gotta find a way to add value. That's just the reality. Unless you wanna get into huge, big scale farming, take out big loans and take on all that risk and debt. You know, the government loves to give lip service and virtue signal about sustainable, local, uh, food security, all these buzzwords, but they don't really do anything about it, which is which is really interesting because again, what they say and what they do are two different things. And even just look at some of the examples Jody lays out in this video that I just find are are astonishingly um, contradictory. In that you can sell the product from your farm, you can use the product of your farm in your restaurant only if you have the ability to make alcohol. And that obviously came from the wine industry. And so the wine industry in British Columbia, particularly Southern British Columbia where I live, is a huge lobby and it makes tons of money. And I've got nothing against the wine industry whatsoever. But it's interesting that there's all of these special uh, exceptions for people that make alcohol that don't exist for, for farms. And 
it's interesting because it's quite obvious if you understand how these things work. In that if you've got money and deep pockets, you can lobby politicians, you can invite them to fancy dinners and you, they can wine and dine with high rollers and they love that stuff. And then you get special favors later on when it comes to right policies. And this is obvious why these special exceptions are made in the cases that Jody has uh, listed here. and. We can't take this. We got to do something about this. So again, please sign this petition, share it with many people as you can and do something. All right guys, thanks for watching.